Yorana from the island of Tahiti, and welcome to Filled with His Love. I've never thought about how central relationships are to the gathering. You probably have, but I haven't. From the moment that Peter visited Cornelius, you remember this scene, the gospel of Jesus Christ has been preached to everyone, Jew and Gentile alike. He was the first Gentile. We don't know much about the relationship that ensued from that first meeting between Peter and Cornelius, but we do know that they both listened to the Spirit, which led to the baptism of Cornelius and his whole family. This was the beginning of taking the gospel to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Now, fast forward to 1843. This is a long fast forward, but or maybe for us, it's a looking back still, but... The saints were settling in Nauvoo, building a temple and sending missionaries to other parts of the U.S. and to England, where thousands were joining the church. To that point, no missionary had been called to preach the gospel to a people who spoke a language other than English. But that all changed in 1843. How did this happen? There are some parallels between this moment in Nauvoo and the moment when Peter was inspired to go to that first Gentile, Cornelius. Inspiration happened in multiple ways to multiple people, and the first foreign language mission was begun in the church. Now, you're going to need to cut me a little slack here because I want to give you a picture of how this might have happened in 1843. I've been studying the history of this event a lot lately, but rather than giving you a list of events and dates, which I find a little bit boring, I want to share with you how I imagined it happening, as close to the actual history as I can make it. My account will be a bit more like, you know, when the movie says, based on a true story, (laughs) that's what my account will be here. So Addison Pratt and his wife Louisa had joined the church when the Crosbys, who were their friends, introduced the church to them. The Crosbys and the Pratts then joined the saints in Nauvoo. Addison was a contemporary of the prophet Joseph. I actually didn't know this until recently. He was about the same age. Addison was 41 and Joseph was 38 in 1843. So Joseph loved to hear Addison talk about how he had sailed all over the world as a whaler. Here's my take on how their conversations might have gone. Of course, we don't have their conversations in print, but this is my take on how their conversations might have gone while they were both working on the temple in Nauvoo. Joseph, Addison, you've got to tell me more about your adventures on the open sea. Addison, oh, I loved sailing. I knew I wanted to be a sailor when I was a small boy, and when I got old enough to work on a ship, huh, I was out of there. I was out of my home. I had to steal away in the middle of the night because my dad didn't want me to go, and I became a sailor. Joseph, wow, it kind of sounds a lot like my father. He wanted me to be a farmer just like your dad did. He wanted me to stay put, stay at home, but they just wanted the best for us. But like you, I always wanted, I always wondered what it would be like to see beyond the shores of this country, to see what the rest of the world looked like. Addison, well, it's not all good. (laughs) Some of the sailors gave me a bad time because I was so young. But I kept at it. I sailed all over for years and years. One of my favorite trips was to Hawaii. In fact, I jumped ship there and stayed for six months. You can see I was a little bit rebellious at times. I kind of rebelled against my dad, and then I rebelled against the captain of the ship and stayed on shore that time. But the people were so kind to me. They treated me like family. I mean, they they welcomed me so much. It was amazing. Joseph, so how did you communicate with them? Well, that wasn't easy. They didn't speak much English, and I didn't know any Hawaiian. But it was like they enjoyed trying to help me learn their language. Joseph said, did you actually learn how to speak Hawaiian? Addison said, well, in six months, I could converse pretty well with them. I wouldn't say I was totally fluent, but I learned enough to get by. Now, Joseph, I hope I'm not overstepping my bounds, but the whole time I was with them, I kept thinking about the Book of Mormon and how the Hawaiians seemed to me like the Native Americans here in this country. I, I kept feeling like the Book of Mormon was written specifically for them. Joseph, hmm, Addison, that is an interesting thought. 
I want to talk to you more about that. But first, have you had your patriarchal blessing yet? Addison said, no, I, I haven't had that. He says, I think the Lord has something special for you, Addison, in the future. I want you to get your patriarchal blessing. So Addison got his patriarchal blessing, and in that blessing, he was told that he would take the message of the Restoration to people in far-flung places. After the patriarch said, Amen, he looked at Addison and said, Well, my good son, it looks like a whalen you will go. Shortly after that, Joseph issued a call to Addison and three other brethren to set sail for the Sandwich Islands. Basically, that's Hawaii. Addison had spent most of his time when he was there on Oahu, the main island. So they could begin preaching the gospel to the Polynesian people. So these four newly called missionaries set sail from Massachusetts, traveled around Australia. If you want to look on the map, this is a long way around to get to Tahiti. Traveled around Australia and finally landed on the small island of Tupoi, which is 400 miles south of Tahiti. And of course, Tahiti is a long way south of Hawaii, so they were far away from their original destination. Think of it for a minute. Their voyage had taken over six months. Uh, it was grueling and difficult. In fact, one of the four missionaries had died and was buried at sea. He had tuberculosis before the trip, and they thought maybe the trip would do him good to have all that fresh sea air, but he only lasted a couple of months and then died early during the voyage. So the three that were left were Addison and Benjamin F. Gruard and Noah Rogers. And so they, three of them disembarked in Tupoi, and here's how I imagine what happened next. This is my take on it. Addison, I don't know about you guys, but I'm staying right here. These people want us. They're feeding us, helping us in every way. I can't believe how welcoming they are. Benjamin, yeah, I agree, but we know that Tahiti is a much bigger island to the north. A lot more people. That's where I'm headed. That's where I want to go. I don't want to stay here, Addison. Noah, and I agree with Ben Addison. You can stay here if you want, but we are going to go to the big island, Tahiti. So Rogers and Gruard left Tupoi and sailed to Tahiti, but there was a war raging in Tahiti at the time, which they didn't know about. The Tahitians had largely sided with the English and were together fighting the French, who wanted more influence in Polynesia. So Rogers and Gruard did not stay long in Tahiti. They decided to go to the Tuamotu Islands, north of Tahiti. The Tuamotu Islands are often shaped like donuts, flat as a pancake, not volcanic islands like Tahiti and Tupoi with sharp, jagged mountains in the middle. And these Tuamotu Islands have these ocean lagoons in the middle of the donut and then ocean all around the outside. They're sometimes called the reef islands or the coral atolls. I will share more about this story in my next episode. As you listen to it, consider how important relationships are to the gathering. The relationship between Addison and the Prophet Joseph, the relationships that develop between Addison and the people of Tupoi, the role that language played. Addison did not speak a word of Tahitian, but he did know some Hawaiian, so he tried teaching them in Hawaiian at first and they gradually helped him become totally fluent in Tahitian. Think of the relationships among the new converts that Addison baptized. Zion is all about relationships, people supporting and serving each other. And Zion was what Addison was trying to establish on that tiny island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. He never called it that, but any time a missionary goes out to teach the gospel, they're trying to establish Zion wherever they are. Addison and his companions had begun the first mission to a people who spoke a language other than English. I will share more in the next episode. Here in Tahiti, we are celebrating the 180th anniversary of Addison Pratt landing on the island of Tupoi. Landed there in 1844. Now it's 2024. It's 180 years. And this will be a big celebration. Leaders of the church will be coming from Salt Lake and from all the other Pacific area missions to participate in this celebration with us. It is going to be a very, very powerful event. And so we, in these little islands here, 
are all looking forward to a celebration of that very first time that Addison set foot on the island of Tupoi in 1844. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will look forward to seeing you next time.